BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 146, Nutrition and Food Additives. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Those of you that follow this podcast know that Kathy is an advocate for bioidentical hormones. And today we're going to be having a conversation about what's natural and what's unnatural and, and what works better or worse. And we're going to focus our conversation on diet and nutrition. Uh, there are products that can be made to replicate as near as possible natural substances. Mm -hmm. And those products can be used and oftentimes work pretty well. Mm -hmm. But natural substances work naturally. <laughs> work better because work your body, better. our bodies were made for that. Our bodies were made to interact with nutrients that are like nature made them, like they grew. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I use Vima, which is a supplement that gives you all of your vitamins and minerals mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a juice. It's actually a juice in a little shot that is made from real vegetables and fruit. Okay. So why would a person need a supplement anyway? I mean, we eat food. I, I eat Two or three times, four or five times, eight, ten times a day. <laughs> I eat what's put in front of me wherever I am. Why do I need supplements? Because what we eat is... <laughs> Mass-produced, man. It's mass, <laughs> mass-produced, and, and it has been metabolized, basically. It's usually made into something that tastes good and makes you keep coming back, which isn't Salt usually and natu added. natural, and it's usually some kind of wheat product or, yeah. or corn product, and those, or sweetened mm -hmm. by corn syrup. So those, are the, those things are not good for us. In fact, they leach away, mm -hmm. and coffee as well, which I'm kind of a coffee nut, but a coffee fiend. And that leaches away our normal nutrients that we eat in whole foods. That's why you the know, Mediterranean diet has been suggested, is because it's whole foods, but it takes time to cook. When I was a child in high school, back in the... Dark ages. Dark ages, <laughs> in central Arkansas, uh, I had a, a teacher who used to tell us you shouldn't eat white bread mm -hmm. because white bread is flour that's been bleached. They put bleach in it and they wash out all the food ingredients all the good stuff. and you're left with filler. So don't eat white bread. And I go home and I tell my parents and they would say, well, that's absolutely ridiculous. Because <laughs> you go home and you say, my teacher said, mom, you shouldn't be serving me this. And then she'd get defensive and, then you and she'd the point teacher. to the Wonder Bread commercial on television. Wonder Bread builds healthy bodies in 12 ways. <laughs> and she said, your teacher doesn't know diddly. Mm -hmm. And so we grew up eating white bread. Of course, now I don't eat it yeah. because now when, you in, know. in order to manufacture mass consumable prefabricated foods, you have to calculate both a device or a stratagem for getting people to eat it because it tastes like something they're used to and want. Or it and makes them feel a rush of blood makes sugar. Makes them feel some kind of a rush of blood sugar. And you have to figure out shelf life. You got to put stuff in it that, you know, if a Twinkie can sit unopened on a shelf for five years and still be edible, you have to wonder how your body is going to digest that. What's and going to be the impact? The, and those chemicals leach out our nutrients. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to live in the modern day, if you're going to go out and maybe, God forbid, eat yeah. McDonald's or something once a week, I mean, that leaches out your your nutrients, so you have to replace them. We also don't eat enough fruit and vegetables. We, mm -hmm. I mean, the requirement is huge mm -hmm. for fruits and vegetables, So, and you need to have a variety. So that means you need to go to the store a lot. Right. So that takes time. So there has to be someone who's willing to do that in your household to go to the store and get fresh food so that you can snack on that instead of something that, like Cheetos, my other favorite disaster. Mm -hmm. I mean, Cheetos are terrible for you, oh, <laughs> but boy, every once in a while good. I have to have one. And yeah. so then I'm going to have to eat a bunch of fresh food to balance it or take my Vima to replace what I've just leached out. Okay. So that's one reason we need, we need supplements. Okay. So there, there's a blog called Nutrition Trips, Folic Acid Killer or Cure All, written by Dr. Mark Hyman. And we were reading Dr. It's a Hyman's great article. blog. It's a great article. And he was talking about particularly the controversy around folic acid. Mm -hmm. And there is a non-natural uh, vitamin, uh, folate, folate, folate uh, that has been generated as a food supplement. And then there are natural folates that people can consume. And in his article, he talks about the distinctions that need to be made between the two, and mm -hmm. what works and what doesn't work. 
Right. There's 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 folate that's like from green leafy vegetables, and then there's folate that's put into cereals to to give it nutritional value. Well, the folates that are pushed into into cereals are engineered and right. synthetic, and those take up all of the uh, spots that would normally accept folate, and they fill up the receptor sites, so they block the folate from green leafy vegetables. So it's not good for you to eat cereal that has folic acid in it or uh, because the folic acid isn't li like natural food. Mm -hmm. It is, has been engineered into something else. It doesn't work the same in our bodies and it prevents natural foods from giving us folic acid. What does folic acid do? It prevents heart attacks. It keeps uh, pregnant women from having open neural tube defects like open spine, spina bifida. 1998, when they started fortifying food with folic acid, fortifying meaning mm -hmm. adding this artificial folic uh, substitute as an ingredient, spina bifida birth rates went down 20%. Right. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing, and that was in a certain population. Mm -hmm. But in uh, other people, who can't process the synthetic, and there's a there's a large population of those people. MTHFR. People who have the gene MTHFR, and if you have one or two of those, that puts you at risk for not being able to metabolize the synthetic folate. Mm -hmm. So yes, some people would be better better on it. Some people will not, and and it's a big will not because the people that can't metabolize it are the ones that that are are blocked. They block the receptors. So mm -hmm. the folate that you get in your food, you should eat green leafy vegetables. However, um, if you can't, then you need to take methyl folate. And that is the that is the kind everyone can metabolize. And, so and if you don't know if you're an MTHFR, just take methyl folate. And it will, as a supplement, it's natural. It's just like what you make. The odds are a little better need. than one in three that you are an mthfr -er. Right. So a little, I have a little it. more than one third. You have it. I, when, in our genetic th mm -hmm. genetic spit test, yeah. we, so, we found it. So we can't metabolize the artificial folic acid, uh, but we can metabolize natural methyl folates. Folate. Methyl mm -hmm. folates. And okay. folate from food. Uh huh. So, so folates are like dark green leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. Your favorite kale. <laughs> kale? Kale's good for you. <laughs> yes, kale is good for you. Eat it. As my mother used to say, eat it. It's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Which means it's going to taste terrible, but, it, yeah, but you should eat it. There's exactly. ways to cook it. Yeah. But spinach and anything that's fresh, green, and leafy, and don't overcook it, don't kill it. Mm -hmm. You know, steaming it is better than than boiling it to death so so that you can keep in all the nutrients. Because if you do cook it, you may, it's kind of like uh, with potatoes, the nutrients are in the skin. Mm -hmm. And if you peel the skin and throw the skin mm -hmm. away, what you're eating is just leftover starch that's not good for you and mm -hmm. carbs. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, and so in this case, you need to eat either fresh raw or you need to eat steamed vegetables that are dark green. I mean, it's easy. It's, it's folate was named folate because of foliage, because you could, anything that was dark and green, you could eat, you could get folic acid out of. So that's, that's one of the ways, is it good for you or isn't it good for you? This, uh, Dr. Hyman had mm -hmm. three patients that were different ages, different um, races, different situations medically, but they right. all reminded him of uh, a time he had been in China when they had had a bunch of neural tube defects for the babies that were born in the winter because the mother, or were conceived in the winter because the mothers didn't get any green leafy vegetables. So all the babies that were born like in uh, October, November, December mm -hmm. were conceived in the winter. Moms didn't have folic acid. They had neural tube defects. They had open spine and they had anencephaly, which means there's no brain. There's just, the ba those babies can't survive. So uh, they, they looked into it and they found that that was a folic acid problem. The, the uh, women didn't get enough green leafy vegetables. So. So that's so they determined that they would supplement them, and yeah. they are now supplemented, and they are now not having the same response. He says in the article that the the two patients and the Chinese baby, mm -hmm. what they had in common is that they all had inadequate levels of specific vitamins, either acquired or genetic, and that their methylation systems were not working properly. Mm -hmm. So, can you talk a little bit about methylation? What is what does that mean? Me well. <laughs> A methyl group is you have to take a methyl group off of 
uh, and nutrient that you're eating so well, that you can you have to remove it so that you can get the value. So you have to be able to remove that group. And and they uh, he talks about something called homocysteine. Homocysteine. And homocysteine and methylmalonic acid. Right. So if you can't metabolize the methyl group on uh -huh. folic acid, uh -huh. then you collect folic acid that doesn't work in your body. Mm -hmm. and, that cause, and that creates something called homocysteine. Homocysteine, when that goes up, that increases your risk of heart attack. I don't care if, you're, if you have no inflammation in your body and your cholesterol is low and you run every day. If you have a high homocysteine, you're at risk for having a heart attack. And it that was the issue with one of these men. Right. You're increasing your risk of plaque in your vessels. So homocysteine is the byproduct that collects if you cannot process your folic acid. So if you're taking synthetic folic acid, and you can't process it properly, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a lot of homocysteine. And that's measured in a blood test? Mm -hmm. It's a blood test, and we do that periodically. We don't do that as our standard um, screening test because mm -hmm. not everyone has risk factors for that, and right. not everyone has uh, s symptoms. But I think it's such an expensive test that if, when the price comes down, then that I will be adding that to my screening tests because I think it's very important to know. Well, according to Dr. Hyman, a breakdown in methylation, if, if you're one of those people that can't process that, mm -hmm. increases your uh, risk levels for osteoporosis, diabetes, mm -hmm. cervical dysplasia, cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, depression, and pediatric cognitive dysfunction, dementia, and stroke. Mm -hmm. That's it's, a lot of stuff. That's a lot of that stuff. That if you take vitamin B uh, in the right way, if you find the way... Yeah, folate's way, a vitamin B, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> It's benign. But, but it's got to be a natural vitamin B, is his right. argument, not right. an artificial vitamin One B. One that we can metabolize. Because and that's called me methylated uh -huh. B. Okay. So, that's, so that's both B12 and B, B9. And so, so then he identifies eight factors mm -hmm. that if, if you're not getting this expensive blood test and you don't know for sure, you know, it's kind of like insurance. It, it's a, a gamble on your behalf. And you, you can't eat all the green leafy vegetables, but you want to take a supplement. Right. Okay. So, so he's eight, eight factors that he identifies that say you might have problems with methylation issues, uh, and you need to look at these things. And one is genetics. Uh, 20 to 30 percent of us we're predisposed genetically to high levels of homocysteine. Cysteine. Homocysteine. Uh, poor diets, which means you're not eating enough green, green vegetables, leafy vegetables. Uh, and you're not eating enough fruits. That's right. So you need need those things. Smoking, yeah. the absorption of carbon monoxide. If you work in a carbon monoxide rich environment, you know, and people complain about this. We were at a restaurant the other other afternoon, and we were sitting outside because it was a beautiful afternoon. Mm -hmm. And at a table near us, there were a couple of gentlemen that pulled out these large honking cigars mm -hmm. and started smoking them. Was it John? No. <laughs> no, it wasn't John. It's my husband. But, <laughs> but there was a, a table near us with an elderly man and, and lady and their grandkids. And the kids were complaining about cigars. So the mm -hmm. man very politely asked them, would you please not smoke the cigars? And I mean, this erupted into a screaming match and a debate oh with gosh. curse words. Among all the diners sitting in this certain area over the freedom to smoke or the freedom not to smoke, and I have rights, and all you non-smokers have driven us away, and blah, 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 blah. We aren't uh, going to take that up today. No, <laughs> no, but, but what made me think of it is in reading this article mm -hmm. about folate and consumption and healthy living and so on, it says I'm at risk. You know, if, and, you, and if you are a if smoker or you're in a closed environment with a smoke, smoker, I mean, the dose you can get outside is not that high. Right. It was a matter of the smell, I, right. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure it was for because, those little kids, yeah. But, but, you know, people our age grew up in homes where people were smoking in our oh homes. Oh, my God, in the house, in the car. I mean, I mean, I don't think I rode until went. I was 15 in a car that wasn't full of smoke. I, that was normal. Yeah. I mean, it, for those of you who are young, that that was normal for us. And yeah, the world no, has dramatically every, changed. Yeah, everybody smoked. I mean, mm -hmm. I even found On pictures television. of my mother smoking, and she was an advocate of no smoking, but serious. When I, I mean, first moved to St. Louis, there were smoking sections in the movie theaters. Really? And, yes. I don't remember that. And And there were, of course, smoking sections on planes. Yeah, which, that's which true, I thought and that was just made me nauseated. <laughs> that was awful because it was everywhere. It was everywhere. It was just circulating. recirculated air in a plane for a three-hour flight. Uh, you know, they're not filtering all that smoke out. So of there. those, so those of you who have had this 
kind of environment or are still in it, yeah, or got or you smoke cigars or cigarettes, right? You need to be taking some methylfolate or eating some tons of green leafy vegetables because that's the only thing that's going to help you counteract this. And then he talks about malabsorption yeah. problems. What what does that mean exactly? That's a I have that I have a big issue with. Everybody who comes into my office is on Prilosec or Tagamet or something to decrease the acid in their stomach. And okay. yes, we don't want people to have ulcers. And I've, I mean, I've had an ulcer before, but, and I took that stuff for like a month, but that mm. blocks all the nutrients that you eat in your food. It, because your stomach doesn't have enough acid, you can't absorb the nutrients. Mm -hmm. It's a big problem. People are being, it's like they're, they're losing all their vitamins because it just goes right on through. I so... This is not science or medicine. This is personal bias. But I am of the opinion that people in the marketing industry create problems mm -hmm. and then sell a solution for the problem. Right. And it's so you, you, you be careful about your consumption of over-the-counter products. And they advertise medicines on television now all the time. It's going to make you healthy and beautiful and wonderful and rich and you'll live forever. <laughs> but they don't even tell you what it's for. Right. And often... It, it's uh, just branding so it, you it's know just, the brand. Yeah, it, it, let me sell you this junk and you'll be happy. No, they'll be happy because they have your money in the pocket. That's true. So That's be true. careful well, about over-the-counter because when you talk about malabsorption issues, you go out and buy all these things that are over-the-counter that you don't know what they are or how they work, but somebody recommended it. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody's practicing medicine without a license. Mm -hmm. Oh, my grandmother took that and it helped her. Yeah, but even the doctor, even, I mean, doctors are trying to keep you from having some terrible thing. So they sure. think, oh, here, take, you know, take Prilosec, take mm -hmm. Prevacid because we don't want you to have an ulcer. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't, and you don't want to have, you know, kind of pain every night when you go to sleep, but there's some natural ways that don't take away your ability to absorb your nutrients. I mean, I give people papaya. I mean, papaya you that you just chew. give people placebos just to shut no, them up? No, I've never done that. No. Because I wouldn't be that dishonest. <laughs> <laughs> well, but some people just, you know, like, give me something. You know, I don't care what it is. I don't some even know mints. what it is, but it's magical. But it doesn't work like that. It really no. doesn't. They really do have, I mean, this... When you take something that blocks the acid in your stomach, there's an act action. I mean, it does decrease the chest the pain that you have. Okay. So, and the reflux. And we don't want to all have esophageal problems, but most of us don't need to be taking that every day. Right. Some of us do. All right. And then you're going to have to really take a lot of supplements to get past that. Well, so then he goes on, he talks about decreased stomach acid. Mm -hmm. So if you've got malabsorption problems, you can have it the other way, too, in terms of de decreased stomach acid. Mm -hmm. uh, medications, drugs like uh, acid blockers mm -hmm. uh, are methotrexate. What is that? Methotrexate's a, a folic acid um, depleter that's used, not because it's a folic acid depleter, but because it's used for rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune disorders. And so you have to take extra folic acid if you take methotrexate just to replenish your body. Yeah, it for says for cancer, regular. for arthritis, for autoimmune disease, mm -hmm. oral contraceptives, uh, HCTZ. Hydrochlorothiazide for, it's a diuretic. That can, mm -hmm. have, that can have some negative effects on your folate. Okay. And on your nutrients. So, so the challenge is then, I guess, that these are all balancing acts. And his argument is that as you try to balance your system, and keep it healthy. It's always better to to move in the favor of natural substances mm -hmm. over artificial substances right. because nature nature is what we, we're made of. We're made naturally. Our bodies were made to consume foods. They weren't made to consume chemicals, mm -hmm. and so the chemicals don't don't work as well as the natural supplements. The natural it's really foods that we're taking only in a pill mm -hmm. and we're sub substituting food with a pill but those nutrients are something that we need to live he a healthy life and not get cancer or any of these other issues right so we need it and we should ha take it in the most natural form for us to really absorb it and then we have to worry about the things we're doing that would block absorption okay so be careful about words like fortified <laughs> uh, yeah and be careful about prepackaged uh, pre-consumed pablum foods mm -hmm. you know cereals are pretty much out cereals yeah. are like unless you get it at the health food store and it's granola it's probably not good for you so look at 
the, the descriptions on the boxes of the, of the products that you buy mm -hmm. and see what supplements are in there. No, don't be a fanatic, but be a reasonable, healthy person. And one of the most responsible ways you can do that is eat green leafy vegetables and fresh fruits mm -hmm. on a regular basis. They should be healthier. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.